look at the beautiful sunset. Oh my God, the most beautiful time of the day. Hello everyone and welcome to Bhavnavgarh National Park. My name is Suyash Keshri, I'm a wildlife presenter and filmmaker and on this experience I will be a virtual host here in Madhya Pradesh, Bhavnavgarh National Park. It's one of the best places in India to explore wildlife and most densely packed tiger reserves of the world. But today I'm not alone, I have Himanshu Yadav on first camera with me, on second camera we have Nitin Krishna and our guide for this experience will be none other than Lala. This is quite an experiment that we're trying. What we're actually going to do is bring virtual safari straight to your homes. Uh, a lot of the times people aren't able to visit national parks. Our pandemic actually uh, personified that experience. And this is quite an experiment. There's no script. There is nothing else. Just me, the wild and our cameraman. And of course, you in the back of the Jeep. A little bit about Bandhavga National Park. Behind me, if you see this incredibly large plateau, raises up from sea level to 811 meters in height. And this is what we call as the Bandhogar Plateau. Earlier, Bandhogar used to be a hunting reserve for the Maharaja of Riva. And in 1968, it was declared as a national park. So hunting was stopped. And then wildlife slowly started to come back. In history, it's believed that Ram gifted a fort here or made a fort here first and then gifted it to Lakshman. Lord Ram gifted it to Lakshman during his one bus. And that's why the name Bandhogar comes. Bandho meaning brother in local language and Gar meaning fort, of course. Uh, we also have a sister fort or sister plateau. And you see that kind of bump over there. That is the sister plateau known as Bandhani. I also have a screen with me. So in case during this experience you can imagine me looking at the screen or you could see me looking at the screen again and again i just can take a look here and and make sure that whatever my assistants back there are doing whatever the guide is doing it's all here <laughs> so what i wanted to point out is essentially that that is bandheri cool i'm gonna put the screen down and what we're basically gonna do this morning is gonna take our way through this area and then go into an area known as Chakradhara and Siddh Baba which belongs to a very shy female called Chakradhara female and a few things that we're looking for is in terms of finding tigers and other subjects is of course signs and tracks on the road and with tigers the characteristic calls of different animals sounding the alarm in the forest. Number one is langur alarm calls which go like <coughs> like that and of course, the Cheetal and Sambar alarm calls, uh, which we're going to just play for you right about now.
once again, welcome to Bandhavgarh National Park. It's an absolute pleasure to host you on this experience. India's first ever virtual safari experience. And I'm so proud to be welcoming you to my home. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm actually born and brought up in Madhya Pradesh, which is the state where Bandhavgarh is located. And I've spent most of my professional life in this national park so I know it like the back of my hand and as we're snaking our way down I would like you guys to see this view as it is really really pretty Bandhagar is characterized as a moist deciduous forest actually it's a mixed deciduous forest with moist deciduous and dry deciduous appearing side by side so if you see you see kind of green green trees those are mostly sal, haldu Tendu, Jamun, and those sort of trees that are completely green at this time of the year. And other trees are completely leafless because they are actually shedding their leaves for the long dry season. What they're also doing is when the leaves are on the ground and at this time of the year when the ground is not as nutritious are full of minerals they use the leaves to actually feed themselves because over time the leaves decay and they form kind of a manure yeah as I was saying uh, I've, I've spent a lot of time in Madhya Pradesh because I'm born and brought up here a lot more time in Bandhavkar I've been coming here for 10 years I know the people like they're my family I know the tigers like they're my family I've been able to track over 75 tigers in Bandhankar. The population here is close to 134 recorded individuals, which is the most densely packed tiger reserve in the world. I followed many tigers since they were cubs. For example, this female called Dabadol. I know her since she was four months old. Uh, of course, uh, if you guys know this, story of Solo uh, who I made my first series on I knew her since she was six months old I knew her mother for a very long time as well then there's Spotty Dotty two blue-eyed tigers in Bandhavgarh who I've known since they were just about a year old and many many individuals like that and it's an absolute pleasure to be able to share that with you because I truly believe what we can see we can love and what we can love we will fight to protect here's another tourist vehicle coming through hello good morning how are you Bandhagar is quite popular among tourists from all over the world of course due to the coronavirus situation right now uh, we are not getting any influx of foreign visitors but domestically also it's pretty popular this is a place called Badi Gufa we're gonna visit it a little later in the day it's one of the biggest caves in Bandhavgarh. Bandhavgarh has a thousand, if not more, caves. And this is supposed to be one of the biggest ones. And we'll learn more about it later on in this episode. Here we've got a forest officer coming through. Namaste, how are you? What's up today? Location kuch? नहीं है वहाँ चक्रदारा पे मैं सुबह आ था तो पंजे लगे थे जी हाँ पंजे तो गए सर मौका अच्छा बढ़िया और काम ठीक चल रहे बढ़िया चलिए मिलते हैं सेफ रहिएगा बाय बाय जय हिंद सो इफ यू सी दैट फर्स्ट ऑफिसर ही इस एंटी ही बिलोंग्स टू एन एंटी पोचिंग यूनिट टीम एंड व्हाट ही इस डूइंग इस इस इन इस मॉर्निंग पेट्रोल He's trying to look for pug marks, trying to look for alarm calls, making sure that the entire reserve... Hey guys! 
the entire area of this reserve rather um, because he can't cover the entire reserve alone this area belongs to him and a few of his teammates and basically they look for traps and snares signs of poachers make sure that everything is good animals are doing well it's a very thankless task that they do so I would request that anytime you are in a national park or reserve try talking to the forest officers try talking to the local staff thank them for the work they do they are equivalent to the army for me and the reason is they're protecting our national parks our national animals our national bird and for me that is very very important they are protecting my home too so if you are someone who is in the department of forest or have worked in conservation or would like to work in conservation from my side as we say in hindi jai hind or a heartfelt salute thank you for your service thank you for your work we're going to continue on towards chakradhara but before we do that we're just going to check a water hole real quick perfect yeah <laughs> all right we are approaching a water hole right now and let's see what we can find this is called the gopalpur pond this is actually man made uh man made by the kings or, or during the time of the kings really really long ago Oh, we got a beautiful peacock right there. And another one over there as well. Actually, just wait a second, guys. I'm going to switch the angle so you can get a higher point of view. There's the peacock. Just bumbling about. That's a male peacock. A lot of people think that all peacocks look same, but male and female peacocks look different. I'm going to move the vehicle back a little so that the tree goes away. Okay, sorry Manchu, you can refocus now. Yeah, so as I was saying is uh female peacocks and and male peacocks uh, well female peacocks are known as peahens and male peacocks are of course known as peacocks they look different and often in this pond which is called gopalpur you're able to see male one displaying its feathers and trying to attract itself a mate this one although is telling us that we're not as lucky maybe because there are no females around i can see another male sitting there But if you zoom out and come here, so here we have the Indian peafowl, which is the peacock, and here we have the female. Uh, you know, it's said that in the animal kingdom, males are prettier in every species like peacocks lions you see that uh in elephants in in india only males have tusks uh but <laughs> in the human species that's quite not true it's usually the females that are prettier and the males aren't that pretty though <laughs> so we've got a lot to learn from wildlife and not to appreciate about wildlife as well
All right, we're gonna keep moving on, guys. The sun's starting to come up, so I'm definitely not feeling cold anymore. In fact, in just some time, you'll hear me complaining about how hot it's getting. <laughs> uh, but the nice, fresh air and breeze. Got some jamun trees. All these green trees that you see are jamun trees. In fact, remember I was talking to you all about how Bandhavgarh's forests are called mixed deciduous forests. And this spot is perfect to stop at because you have a few trees here that you can see which are completely uh, bare. So here we have a tree that's completely bare. Most of the trees you might think should either have leaves or depending on the depending on the place you're, you're at in India or across the world, it should be bare. But here in Bhavnagar in central India, we have a different landscape. So this tree is completely bare. But on the left, if you go towards the left, that's a sal tree. If you go towards the left, right here, this is a sal tree. You could see the yellows and orange and even green in those trees. It almost appears as if we are witnessing fall in the United States. And that's why it's categorized as mixed deciduous because we have evergreen trees, we have fruiting trees, we have flowering trees, all playing away at once. Sal is specifically one of those trees that remains evergreen throughout. So half of the leaves will be shedding at one point, half of the leaves will be turning yellow, uh, half of the trees will be new. And we've got a lot of bamboo in Bandhavgarh as well. And I'm just trying to see if any of the bamboo is dead or dying. So we have got a dead bamboo right over there. But actually, I'm going to move the vehicle a little bit. I'm going to reposition the vehicle a little bit. And onto my, just in front of me right here is the bamboo. Right in front of me is the bamboo and you can see it just looks like a pile of sticks and leaves on top of that. But in fact bamboo as I was saying is a species of, uh, of grass, it's not a tree, a lot of people think it's a tree but bamboo also dies uh, just like any other tree would die so it's, it's kind of in the grey area and how bamboo dies is that every so often you have these flowers and fruits coming out in bamboo in fact uh, we're gonna ask our operators to play flowers and, and and fruits of the bamboos come out and these fruits and flowers basically indicate that the bamboo is now about to die it's amazing how much you can learn about nature and from nature and by learning about that uh, you try and and figure out a way to connect to them and the more you connect, the more you learn, uh, the deeper the understanding gets and the more you want to conserve and protect it. So it's not only about wildlife, right? It's, it's everything, everything together. The soil, let me see. Okay, it's the soil, it's the climate, it's the trees, the leaves, the grass. Everything comes together. A lot of people come in Bandhavgar, or come to Bandhavgar rather, and they, all they want to see is tigers. But if you always keep running after the tigers, oh my god, we got a gore here. Sorry guys, I'm actually going to position the vehicle there. Yeah, if you only focus on tigers, you're going to miss the trees and you're going to miss these beautiful animals. We have a beautiful gore on the right. Actually, let me go back and position the vehicle. Sorry guys, that's what you have to do in wildlife. You have no control over the angles. And I'm going to turn the car a little bit like this. And I'm going to go back a little, sorry. Okay, I think that's good. Yeah. Right there is a beautiful male gar.
and usually males um, unless it's mating season or breeding season uh, they tend to stick out on their own and females form a large herd here in Bandhavgarh what is very interesting about these gores is that we actually faced uh, an extinction a local extinction of gore population in Bandhavgarh National Park and then in late 2012 gores were reintroduced to Bandhavgarh about 50 animals were brought in from Kanha National Park which is another beautiful location right nearby and that 50 has now nearly quadrupled and that just shows that if you give wildlife a chance they will bounce back all right so i have got this reference book open for you guys just to talk about a little bit about the gores uh this these are the females adult females and these are adult males if you see the adult males are the one that have a ridge on its on their back but adult females they do not have a ridge on their back uh, these two are young and then this is a fully grown male massive ridge curved hooked horns compared to the females who have rather straight horns uh, he also has a great temporal boss that's what's called the boss right here boss chorus is why that's why uh, then they have a big dewlap dewlap is basically the loose skin under their uh, chin they are the biggest and the largest uh, extant bovines in the world and largest bovines in uh, peninsula India. They often mistakenly call the Indian bison, although it's not related to the North American bison. It is a large and uh, dark bovine, in fact. And what's really funny is that some people are saying that it's wearing white socks. And I wish I could show you young ones, but it's not breeding season right now for gores with the young ones look beautiful and they are so incredibly cute young females or uh, sub adult females start about at 500 kilograms and they can go up to six or seven hundred kilograms and males can weigh up to 1,000 kilograms or even higher. That is an astoundingly large animal. I'm just going to let you guys enjoy watching this <laughs> gar eating. It's so funny and cute. Oh, look at them. Look at them coming. I wish I had my camera. <laughs> Those will be beautiful shots, but um, when we're driving, I want to focus on the road. I want to focus on tracking. And I don't want to focus on taking photographs. Oops. Our gore had a little slip. Are you okay there, buddy? <laughs> he looks a little embarrassed. And then back to eating, chomping away. Nom, 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 nom. Alright, we're gonna say goodbye to our gore and then see what else we can find. Bye bye, Mr. Gore. Enjoy your feast. Uh, looking at him kind of made me hungry though. <laughs> He's just looking at us go. <laughs> That's so funny. Bye. And here we are reaching Chakradhara Meadows or Chakradhara Grasslands. Oh wow, I see pug marks. <laughs> Just on the left side, I see pug marks. 
Oh, right there. Oh, wow. This is very fresh. Sorry about the bump. We're just trying to dismount the camera. Look at that. How cool is that? And this is a female, I know, because if you see this bug mark, it's quite thin and elongated, especially the uh, first toe from the right. And how you ascertain a tiger's bug mark and how old it is, is because what happens is over time, dust settles down into the paws and the edges are not sharp and refined. Also, only two vehicles have come through here yet. So if more vehicles had come through, that would tell us that it, the pug mark is quite old. Cool, so the female has actually walked this way and then the pug marks have kind of cut into the grassland. I wonder if she's sitting somewhere in the grassland actually. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make our way up there. I'm just gonna show you the river called Charanganga, and then maybe we're gonna turn back and see if we can find something around the water hole again because if the female has gone like this then she might come out near the water hole to drink some water because there's a water source right above there and she didn't choose to drink water over there it's always good to keep tracking back and watching Now this angle of Bandhani is amazing. You see when we were up there on the top. It's okay. When we were up there on the top, you might have thought that this little iconic plateau, which is known as Bandhani, and the one on the left, which is the bigger one, Bandhagar, might be the same and, and connected to each other, but there's a quite a long gap in between them approximately 500 to 600 meters because there's actually a road that goes in between them it's kind of an optical illusion all right we're going to continue Towards my right is a small river which we call the Charan Ganga. Charan meaning feet, Ganga of course being the holiest river in India. And the re reason it's called feet is because it originates from a Vishnu statue which is called Sheshaya. And here you can see a good look of Charan Ganga. It originates from Sheshaya, which is a 10th century statue of Lord Vishnu, uh, halfway through the fort area. We're going to see it later on in the experience. We're going to visit it. Okay, let's zoom out and show them a little bit of the grassland. Here we have the grassland known as the Chakradhara and of course when we were on the top of the hill over there where we did the introduction you could see these hills so let's show them this so let's show you guys this grassland which is absolutely spectacular on the right uh, is Bandhani which is called sister Bandhagar meaning brother fort Bandhani means sister and from the top when we were, when I was just doing the introduction you might have thought that this Bandhagar area which is a plateau must continue all the way to this little hillock as well but in fact as you can see from here there's a long distance in between them and Himanshu is just zooming in to Bandhani so Bandhani on top of that is an anti-poaching camp as well which is called the Bandhani camp and it is really an important place Okay guys, actually I can hear some calls. 
I can hear some alarm calls, so we're just gonna go back. I hear alarm calls of the deer, and so we will come back and see the sceneries later. Lala, please tell me when I can cut the vehicle to turn it. Right here. Okay, I'm turning the vehicle, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, oh, bright and sunny. So I can hear cheetah alarm calls coming from the, that distance, right where we saw the god. <coughs> Sorry, I got a insect in my mouth. Kaha se Gopalpur sa hai? Gopalpur. It's in fact coming from the Gopalpur pond. And let's see what we have there. So deer on the road that are looking. Gaur ko to dekh kar nahi bol. Le chalo aage. Mantra exposure. All right, we're just going to stop here, and we're just going to see where the alarm calls are coming from. Cubs, look at them, they're so tiny. So I can actually see them on the screen here as well, whatever Himanshu is recording. Oh my god, tiny. What? Don't move. We're gonna try getting you guys a closer angle. I can see the mother. We see the mother as well. Oh my god. Oh, there's the mother. 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 Oh my god, look at her. She's beautiful. She's a Chakradara female. She's very, very rare. Nobody has seen her. Only a few people have seen her. Only a few people have seen her ever. Up, up, 
Go down. No, 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 no. No? Sorry, go down. Down, 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 down. No down. All the way, all the way, all the way. Oh wow, she's coming right in the road. Look at her. Beautiful. Wow. So we're just gonna wait here. We're just gonna wait. My God, this is amazing. Used to vehicles, she's a little shy. Okay, we're just gonna keep going ahead. supposed to be somewhere here. Where'd they go? Alright, we're just gonna be patient and wait. Okay, I think they've gone to the water hole, so I'm just gonna see. The mother is somewhere here. The mother is somewhere here. Okay, they haven't come here, so I'm just going back to the vehicle. sat somewhere. That's why there aren't any alarm cones in this area and just waiting for a cup. The cups are on the right, but they have to live on the way. Maybe because mm -hmm. they were playing with each other, they went that way. So we're going to just go up and see if we can find the mother as well. Or let's see if we can find the cups again. We're going to do it very slowly.
This is where the cubs are supposed to be. We're just going to stop here and try seeing. Look, there is a big thing. Here, no. Here, there is a road. Six-year road. Yes. If you go to Sexy Road, you can go to Sexy Road. Yes. Let's see the children. Let's see the children in the water. Let's see the children in the water. If you call the children, they will call the road. Um, so what we're doing is just taking a round and checking where she went but interestingly when I was just moving the vehicles what Lala told me our guide he said that the tigress actually snarled at the kids that basically is a sign that hey kids I want to go you guys stay back and that's why the they didn't cross with her because we gave them ample space it was 30 nearly 35 meters which is good enough and she looked at us she snarled she said okay back off um, 
I'm out leaving and she left and that's why I think the Cubs didn't go with her we're just staying around uh, maybe if we can bump back into her and the Cubs have kind of gone in but wow <laughs> what a luck one of the most uh, shy and the rarest female in Bandhakar who inhabits the dominant area of Chakradhara she is a dominant female in this area but she is still shy and for us to get that my god um, congratulations and drinks for everybody <laughs> we got some deer here so definitely the tigress hasn't come here because otherwise we would hear alarm calls She actually went towards the god that we were seeing and there are a lot of cheetal there as well, cheetal deer. So she definitely would have uh, sat down somewhere otherwise the cheetal and the god must have uh, made an alarm call. And we didn't ha hear either of it. But still it's always better to come and check and then if you can't see anything here, if you can't hear anything here, we'll go back to the place where she crossed from. And what I'm doing right now is just trying to look for any bug marks and signs of her crossing. But all I can see is um, deer, langur crossings, but no tiger pug marks. All right, um, I think we're gonna leave. There's no movement. Our sighting for the day is good enough. Let's see, we're gonna go towards uh, another female's area. Her name is Kajri. I've known her since she was just about four months old. Alright, so we're driving to this uh, place called Badi Gufa and which basically essentially in English means uh, big cave. It's one of the biggest caves in Bandhavkar and it's not man-made, even you might think that it's man-made. Of course, on the inside when we go, there's some part where it, was, where it was cut by humans but this was how it was. Here we have Badi Gufa. So this is one of the places where you're allowed to get off in Bandhaka. So come along with me guys. Give me your hand. Fine. Okay, cool. So earlier, earlier a lot of times what used to happen is that uh, they put this cave because earlier what happened, used to happen is sometimes tourists would come in and they would find a tiger, leopard or sloth that are sitting here. And of course they would get fight of their lives. Oh, loud. Come through. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, there was a gecko. You nearly stepped on it. Wow, look at this gecko. Sorry. Look at this gecko. All went inside. My bad. Yeah, it just came out. <laughs> Here, see this gecko. Here we are inside Bari Gufa. Bandhavgarh has about 39 caves, uh, not the entire Bandhavgarh, just this hill area of Bandhavgarh, the fort area. It has 39 caves, some of which are nearly first century uh, or nearly dated to first century. This one specifically is dated to 10th century. Again, to remind you in Bari Gufa. Uh, in the beginning, when during the time of Maharajas and, and, and other times, people used to use this as place to meditate. And then over the time when wars increased, they started putting their guards over here. And that's why you have these different places where meditation used to happen. So I'm gonna come through here. Be careful of spiders, <laughs> snakes or other insects, especially scorpions. But you see, right here, you could actually see the sky. 
and this is the ventilation system. This is also the light system. It literally looks like a light bulb. So how intricately it must have been made. So how intricately it must have been made uh, with barely any minimal tools back in 10th century AD. Uh, a lot of these caves are also filled with bats. So I'm going to try finding them for you guys. Oh, I see the bat. Wow, come through, come through. There, there. Do you see it? Whoa. My God, that is amazing. So come on through here and go there. Go there, go through there. Don't worry, they won't do anything to you. A lot of people think that bats suck blood, but here we are in the caves and you can see the bats don't do anything. They're not harmful. And these are called horseshoe bats. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my God. So we're gonna transition this into slow motion for you guys. Wow, these caves are absolutely fantastic and they're incredibly massive as well. As I was saying earlier about the bats, right? I just went there to check if there are more bats, but there are only on two or three of the caves on the right. As I was saying earlier on the bats that people often fear them and they think they suck blood, but that's not true. Bats are incredibly intelligent, incredibly beautiful and important animals. Uh, I always believe what we can see, we can love and what we can love, we will fight to protect. So next time you see a bat, try seeing it from a less hostile perspective. I think, you know, when it comes to bees, insects or bats or even snakes, people always think of it in terms of hostility, that it's going to attack me, it's going to eat me, it's going to kill me. But just be calm, maintain your distance, be calm and see what it does. Bats are phenomenal. They have these ultrasonic uh, that they can hear. They, they don't have really good eyesight. Um, they're partially blind, actually. And all that they do is because they knew that we are there, the hearing is so good um, and they can feel the vibrations because they feel that, because they know that we're there. They're not even banging against us, even though they're flying so fast. Um, recently, bats have got not recently. Again, it's been a year since COVID hit. Bats have got a really, really bad reputation where you know, since 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 it was believed, and it's not proven yet, that COVID must have originated from bats or pangolins, um, or even this species of tortoise, that people started killing bats indiscriminately, setting caves on fire completely, and that's horrible. So please, I I really would like people to know that bats are really good for the environment, and they really don't injure or harm you. Maintain calm maintain distance and just observe the beauty. Let's just see real quick if we can find some other creatures. I'm gonna take off my phone and then just turn on the torch light because there's some spiders that I've always seen here. And if I can find a spider, that'll be pretty cool. Because again, it's not all about mammals, right? You have to have to appreciate all kinds of things here. I'm sure if you come on a safari with me, you get to see that. But if you're a large arachnophobe, oh, I got a little scared because I didn't know there were bats here as well. <laughs> there are bats here. Ah, oh, so beautiful. Hi. <laughs> Sorry to disturb you guys. More bats. Okay, I've already gone on that one. Let's see. There's something here. No. Well, there's one bat here. But I can't find any spiders for you guys today. There was one big spider here, this big. And I would see him nearly every day. And I'd name him Sam. And Sam is being a little too elusive with me today. And I've shown him to a lot of my guests. This specific cave was his bachelor pad <laughs> or a man cave, whatever you like to call it. Man cave is better, bachelor pad. 
Sure, nothing, no, no, no. Okay, more bats come through. More bats, more bats, more bats. Okay, cool guys. One. So we tried looking for the bat, uh, for the other little critters, but we couldn't find them. That's okay. Uh, I just want you guys to quickly get a glimpse of this right here, and I'll read it out for you. There are 39 caves in the Bandhavgar Fort Hill and in surrounding hillocks up to a radius of about 5 kilometers. The oldest caves appear to be as ancient as the 1st century AD. Several caves carry inscriptions in Brahmi script. Some caves also have embossed figures such as those of tiger, pig, elephant and horseman. Bari Gufa, the largest of the caves with a broad entrance, has nine small rooms where we are right now and several pillars. It has been dated back to the 10th century AD, as I said before. It is spacious and has adequate vertical room for a person of average height to stand and walk. It is visible from the fort, which probably signifies its strategic locations. Uh, as I said, you know, they used to put the, put the guards here, and which is pretty strategic. The cave appears to be primitive, lacking the elaborate statues and carvings seen in the caves of Buddhist period. Its purpose remains a mystery, although initially it could have been used by monks for spiritual pursuits and later by the army for strategic purposes. At present, most of the caves are being used by wildlife, from bats to tigers. We've seen bats here. I've already told you about... Um, spider? No, I've already told you about spiders here. And I've told you that people have had instances where they've seen uh, tigers or leopards in the, in the cave. And that's why just for tourist safety, they've closed this place off. That doesn't take away from uh, wildlife because again, Bandhavgarh has thousands and thousands of caves. I mean, just one hill has 39 large caves. You can imagine how big everything else is. I want to give you guys a behind the scenes of our vehicle. It's okay, guys. Um, of course, we are on Safari with Siyash. This is a modified vehicle <laughs> that we're using for filming right now. Uh, that's Lala and that's Himanshu. Himanshu, you can get your buff down to say hi to people. And here we have Nitin. So I'm just going to take this and say, that is Nitin. All right, guys. So we are going to continue on and show you other parts of Bandhukar. I hope you guys are in, uh, enjoying India's first ever virtual safari experience. Come back on and hop on the, on the Jeep with me as we drive off. All right, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the tour of Bari Gufa, the big cave. Uh, since we spent about 20 minutes there and we already spent a lot of time waiting for the Chakradhara female, what we're gonna, actually going to do is we're not going to go towards Kajri territory because it gets a little far. I'm actually going to go back on this road where we found Chakradhara female and see if there's any movement. If not, I'll show you guys some uh, other things that we can find and then we can climb up to Bandhagar Fort area. Uh, we can't go to the fort because that comes in the 80% which is closed off according to Supreme Court gu guidelines in 2012. 80% is uh, closed off, 80% of the national park all across India and 20% is open for tourism so we can't go there. Uh, of course for tigers 20%, 80% doesn't matter. Tigers, all the animals go wherever they want but uh, for us, we can only restrict ourselves to 20% and we must abide by the rules, of course. Uh, but gosh, I would love to show you the fort area. It is absolutely spectacular. On top of the fort area, we have 12 enormous lakes and that basically form the lifeline of Bandhavgarh and its animals because those lakes are an important source of water. And they're entirely made of spring water. They have, we have natural springs coming out. Of course, rainwater gets collected as well. We'll just come back to Gopalpur uh, Talab. We're just going to check it once in case there's anything. Otherwise, we'll go that way. So nothing here, but I really want to point out the green algae to all of you guys because 
This green algae, as the, as the weather changes, sometimes it turns red, sometimes it turns brown, orange, and other times it remains green. Uh, scientifically, it's still being researched why exactly that happens, but... Okay. Okay, we just hear a heard an alarm call, so we're just going to take it out. Lala, should I take it back or should I leave the vehicle here? Okay, Lala says we'll wait here. So let's wait here. Don't mind me, it's getting hot so I'm gonna find my hat and put it on. Tigers is all about patience and sometimes you're successful, sometimes you're not. Sometimes it's the tiger sitting there and you spot it. Right now, um, I think our luck was limited to this morning when we saw that mother and girls. So she's somewhere there in the bush, but she's fast asleep. Of course, it's getting hot. Um, so we've been waiting here for a long time now. So we're just going to drive up. I'm going to go back to the Gopalpur pond as discussed earlier. Show you the algae again, talk about that. Let me move up to Sheshaya. Somewhere here is where she's supposed to be. Gopal Talab again and as I told you earlier 
that the algae which is green right now if you show that side in Manchu which is green right now it keeps on changing its colors when it's warm it's green when if when it's cold it's about reddish orange and scientifically the, the what is happening is because of the sun's rays the algae is essentially metabolizing its proteins and changing its color and what actually helps in this is or rather how it's helpful for the water is you see this entire water hole is right in the middle it's completely open it's completely exposed to the elements of nature it's completely exposed to the elements of nature and yet all year round you'll see water here the algae is actually protecting the water it's uh it's it's making sure that the water does not evaporate it forms like a layer on top of the water my dream is to see a tiger drinking water here which i still haven't got today it would be possible because the cubs were right here the mother was right here but the mother crossed and then remember in the morning we tried coming back here because we thought the cubs are going here to drink water or to play in the water but um, that's the thing right it's all wishful thinking <laughs> Beautiful place, nice for a swim and mud wallow, but I'm going to do neither because I got to go <laughs> and it's not allowed. <laughs> We are starting the climb now to the plateau area. I'm going to show you something really cool right here. Uh, this is the web of a funnel web spider. And as you can see, there's a complete funnel. And what happens is they make it on surfaces like these, which are climbing up and also on the ground. Essentially because when it rains or when it is um, uh, windy, any insect in the vicinity will try looking for a hole. Any insect in the vicinity will try looking for a hole and the closest hole they find they'll try getting into it. And this spider, interestingly, will, will use that hole to lure these insects in and of course they become food then. How cool and interesting is that? Quite deceptive as well. <laughs> Very, very deceptive, very cunning, and very cool. I love spiders. I love everything in nature. Look at these rock faces. Absolutely stunning. Look at the beautiful trees. So I want to point something interesting out to you. If you see on the left, you have these beautiful orange trees um, or rather trees with orange flowers in it. And those are the flame of the forest palash tree. Sorry about that leg, everybody. Uh, that was one of the uh, cameraman's legs. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you can zoom in. Okay, yeah, one of those. So that tree, the one with red flowers is called flame of the forest. It's palash. And the white tree that you see is ghost tree because it was believed that earlier times um, that whenever people would come in, 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 in the forest, this tree would light up like a ghost. But what was essentially happening is uh, the moonlight was reflecting off the white pattern of the tree. Beautiful. Beautiful time to be in Bandhavgar National Park. All right, we will continue our way. I'll give you guys a better look at the ghost tree, which is right in front of me. This is a ghost tree, and so is this. You see this one? So white. A 
and you could see that why people would think that this is glowing at night. Incredibly beautiful and white and it has a sweet smell of its flowers right now. In the monsoon season the, the leaves finally come off or, or come up and they're incredibly large. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Ah, the smell of the flowers of Coast Street. Incredible. These rock faces. Sorry about the bumps everyone, just hold tight. You can get bumpy when you're climbing a hill, <laughs> or in this case a plateau. There's another interesting tree, Kusum tree. Again goes back to the point where I was saying that the mixed deciduous forests Lots of colors in the forest right now. The bamboo in the background is nice and yellow. The salt trees far off in the distance, nice and green. And here we have a reddish orange tree, which is the Kusum tree. Lala, can you share any interesting facts of the Kusum tree? Do you know any? Sir, in the old time, the trees were color. Oh right, I've heard that. In the time of Loholi. In the old time, the trees and the sinduri are another tree called sinduri. The flowers are red in its color. The trees were made from the old time. So, interestingly, what used to happen is, in the olden times, during the festival of Holi, they used to make color from the leaves of this tree. Which is incredible, you know, getting that. I actually want, want to try that. Just mash up the leaves, put it on me. <laughs> Nature has so many uses. All right, we'll keep driving on. And see here, we have green leaves. <laughs> so spring here, fall there, and monsoon over there. <laughs> Everything. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Just pan the camera a little towards the left and see the beauty of this place. Here we have another old structure. These are essentially horse stables uh, that were used by the kings to put their horses. And there we have a banyan tree, bud, ficus bengalensis is the scientific name. And often what would happen is in the, in the afternoons here, if you come, you'd see monkeys gathered around and actually licking the rocks. So people might wonder why are monkeys and langurs or any of the animals licking rocks? Well, Bandunga soil, it's, it's, it's lacking one important mineral and that's called salt. So here, in these places, there are only few rocks in Bandhaka that actually have some minerals like salt and other minerals as well. And they essentially lick it because they can't get off from their diet, but they need sodium in their diet. Again, a very cool fact that you can only observe if you spend enough time with the common subjects. If you keep running after the tiger, you'll miss that. <laughs> All the way running back there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many horses do you think this can fit, Lala? Uh. Two in each? Sixteen? Yes. More? Two or in less? Each. Yeah, I think two in each, right? Sixteen. So if they have eight kind of doors or pathways, whatever you can call it, uh, I think they would be able to put, put at least sixteen horses, if not more. <laughs> Sometimes I kind of wish I was born in the olden times because I wanted to see all of that. 
But then again, if I was born there, I could not be doing this uh, virtual safari experience for all of you guys sitting in different parts of the world. Here we have got another structure, which is very old. You would not believe me if I told you that this was essentially the judicial court. Here it says Kachehri, which is the court. Uh, so all the judges, um, the culprits, the witnesses, all of them used to gather here and the proceedings used to happen here during the times of the kings. And this has all been carved off from the structures, or, or rather the structures are all carved off from the rocks that you find here in Bamaka, which is mainly sandstone, uh, which is easy to carve through. And don't let the sand deceive you, uh, it's still very strong. All right, we'll continue. Remember how I was saying in the morning that it's cold and later on I'll be complaining about how it's hot? Well, it's time for me to complain right now. It is really hot. <laughs> My skin's burning. But it's all part of the parcel. This area is really good habitat for leopards as well. They prefer rocky conditions, uh, especially in places where tiger density is so high, such as in Bandhukar. In Bandhukar, we have an, an incredible density of 134 tigers uh, in an area of 1600 square kilometers. Every four square kilometers nearly, you'll see a tiger. Or well, you'll, you'll see the territory of a tiger. Okay, so here we are. We are gonna climb these steps right in front of me. Just gonna take it further. Cool, so we're gonna get off. I would ask you guys to get off with me and I will show you the beauty of this incredible place. Uh, whew, I'm gonna leave my cap here. It's really hot. Okay, let's go. You know, one time what happened was um, a few guests and their guide was walking up like that. It was just in the evening. And as they were walking up, a tigress just got up there and she started looking at them. And it was it was an incredible experience. It wasn't with me, but it was with someone else. The tigress was just sitting here. Welcome to heaven on earth. <laughs> This is what we call Sheikh Sahiya. Absolutely stunning. This is the statue of Vishnu, Lord Vishnu. So that's the statue of Lord Vishnu. And here, between these roots over there is Brahma. Unfortunately, Brahma got covered by the roots. Um, and over there is, is uh, the, the statue of Lord Shiv, which is a Shivling. So here in India, we have this belief in Hinduism that uh, Brahma is the creator of life, Shiva is the destroyer of life, and Vishnu is the preserver of life. So all three main gods are right here in Bandhakar. And Nitin, I would ask you to show the guests a little bit there. Again, the statue of Lord Vishnu and all of this area is, is supposed to be from 10th century AD. And right there where you see the stream originating, that essentially forms the lifeline of Bandhavgar. That is Charan Ganga because, because it's originating from the feet of Lord Vishnu. Uh, there were 
really amazing footage at the olden times where they would have they would have two tigers sitting here and the mother sitting there the two tiger cubs sitting there mother sitting there and how incredible would that be what a sight come we'll walk around so this is the path that actually goes up to the fort uh, i've climbed up here uh, a couple times it's open twice in a year one for krishna janmashtami and i think once for ram navami so i've climbed here um with one of my friends and nationalist gudavia and it takes about 45 minutes from here if you walk at a brisk pace about 1 hour 1 hour 15 minutes if you walk slowly it takes your time so all of this water is actually coming up from the springs that are up there in the plateau. Woo! Sorry. <laughs> Watch out. Beautiful. Look at these roots. You know, these are the jungles of Mowgli. So this is how they used to climb. Oh. I don't think I'm going to go higher because I'm scared that I'll fall. But I just wanted to give you guys a description or <laughs> rather show how Mowgli used to climb. Whew, I haven't worked out in a long time, so that kind of hurt. But also felt good. <laughs> Kids, don't try that at home. Uh, parents, I don't take any responsibility. Except with this. Okay, I'm not going to walk like this. I'm just going to walk in. <laughs> wow. Look at that beautiful, beautiful. Hmm. Just take a couple moments to stand here, look from this angle and just appreciate the sounds of nature the peace and I'm just going to keep quiet for a couple of minutes. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that little tour. There are some other people coming as well, so we are going to head off. And this water that's flowing through is actually completely fine to drink. It is really clean. It's been coming from the roots of the trees, from the top, um, from, the, from the spring. And look at the light filtering through the forest. And then the entire Lord Vishnu is actually covered in this moss like structure or not structure moss like pattern the entire lord vishnu is covered in moss right now uh, in the in the monsoon season it gets nice and green and the statue is actually 35 foot long all right just watch out this is really slippery I'm just going to show this real quick and if you guys want to read about it you guys can take a screenshot of the video and we'll head off so before we do we can show them one last time from this angle because it looks absolutely beautiful Alright guys, let's head out. <laughs> we 
haven't even left the place yet and we have this beautiful langur right in front of me and he's eating the flowers on that tree Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, guys, my hat came in the middle. My bad. Beautiful langur. And as you can see, you know, whenever he's eating, he just takes a couple bites and looks around, sees if everything is fine or not, watches out for predators. I can see other members of his family as well. So I take the vehicle, they're in the front. Because we're gonna see some over there as well. Okay, right here. Okay, I'm not gonna point, but just towards my right, the langu is sitting beautifully and just looking at us. If you get that through the leaves. There he goes. <laughs> Again, camera shy. And off they go. And with that, it's time for us to go somewhere else as well. It's really, really amazing to just spend time with wild animals. See how each one is. And Langur especially, right, they have a lot of human-like characteristics. So you'll see the mother taking care of its kids, uh, even even um, cleaning each other, especially they eat each other's sticks, which sounds disgusting, but it helps them stay uh, stay clean. And usually the the entire troop of Langur is, is managed, or headed rather, by one dominant male. And he will not let any other adult male into the troop and any adult male that are there he's actually gonna fight with them and make sure that they go and find another troop or make a make a living somewhere else even young males sometimes they tend to fight uh, or get into a fight with the adult males because the young males try mating with the females and that is not acceptable to the adult male and the fights can get really feisty <laughs> fights can get feisty that's a, that's a tongue twister And when you spend a good afternoon with Langur, then you get to realize how intricate the society is. There's a dominant female, just like there's a dominant male. There's a female who's second in rank, third in rank. Then there are lower members of the Langur society or Langur troop. And it's really fascinating to observe those differences, which are pretty evident the more time you spend with them. It's all about observation. It's all about patience. It's all about learning as much as possible about the wildlife. Alright, we are heading down. Uh, we're gonna go back to Chakradhara and see if we can find something there as well.
So you see what's very interesting is right here we have a tourist vehicle in front of us and what's interesting is that Bandavgarh gets tourists all year round. Of course, three months of the year it's completely closed. But people from all over the world, especially before COVID, used to be coming just to Bandavgarh National Park. Hello, <laughs> how are you? Madhya Pradesh itself gets over a million visitors every year. Pre-COVID that is, a million visitors every year just for wildlife tourism. And that that is and wildlife tourism you see is a very very important source of revenue for the forest department, for conservation needs. And of course, for locals who work as guides, as naturalists, as drivers, tour operators, hoteliers, waiters and servicemen and women in different hotels, it's all feeding into that system of conservation. And that's what we call ecotourism. Sometimes ecotourism is not very eco-friendly. So I would advise that if you're planning to travel it to any of the national parks and reserves, uh, make sure you look for places which are eco-friendly as well. That means they use minimal amounts of energy, minimal amounts of water. They don't use plastic at all. They don't burn plastic. Maybe a lot of those areas are, or a lot of those lodges and hotels are doing solar paneling so that they can ensure that they are not wasting too much electricity and it's renewable. So those are some ways that you can travel and at the same time not impact the environment too much because every single thing every small thing counts hello uh, i just want you guys to quickly take a look at the cliffs over there they're incredibly high and it's my dream someday <laughs> if I get the permission that is to climb these rocks like you know rock climbing have a nice session of rock climbing be the first person to climb Barnavgar Plateau <laughs> with nothing but bare hands. Uh, Himanshu, if you zoom in a little more, I want them to see the white drop, white patterns. Okay, if you saw, see those white kind of uh, paints, can anyone guess what that is? I'll give you a couple seconds to think what it is. So if you look closely, they are actually holes or burrows kind of in the rock and the white droppings, white uh, paint like structure or paint like uh, thing is actually vulture droppings. So those are vulture nests and those are the droppings of the vulture over the over and over again. They, they do the droppings on the same point and because they consume carrion because they consume a lot of waste material their feces actually turn white over time as with a lot of the other birds as well but we'll take a couple seconds more to just observe this beautiful beautiful location you can still hear the calls of barbet in the distance You could hear the purple sunbird. <laughs> Got it, Nidhan? Alright guys, let's move on.
Thank you. Once more, we are at Gopalpur Point. So once again, I'm going to check it. That's that's what you have to do. You know, check the same place 50, 60 times before you get lucky. Nothing here. No problem. I still wanna. I still wanna take a dip, though. I know a lot of. I know a lot of you watching might not feel the same. I don't think you might wanna take a dip in green water with me. But I assure you, <laughs> it's gonna be worth it in this heat. शाम वाम कोई लिख देगी। दोपहर में भी ले जा सकती है। बच्चे को ले जाना होगा। हाँ। तो दोपहर में भी ले जाएगी। अच्छा, दोपहर में भी ले जा सकती है। So one thing I forgot to mention earlier is uh, Bandhagar, why it's called Bandhu and Gar brother fort is essentially Ram. Uh, it's believed in, in Hindu religion that Ram, Lord Rama, came to Bandhagar during his one mass while he was here. He used the plateau area and he made a fort there by, uh, which were made by his uh, monkey sevaks, langur sevaks. And that fort was later gifted to Lakshman. That's why it's Brother Fort, Pandhagar. Call? Call really far away. <laughs> There's calls everywhere. Another really funny thing is that 
in it's it's believed that one point of time this fort area used to be really really high 10000 times the height of this so at that time when sita was captured in 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 uh in sri lanka sorry captured in sri lanka by ravan hanuman ji was sitting here and he could see ashok vatika from there Ashok Vatika was the place where Sita uh, was captured and put in and he could see that and he could see that he couldn't do anything to help her and that really angered him so it's believed that Hanuman ji can make himself bigger and bigger and bigger so he started getting angry made himself bigger started stomping his feet and sometimes monkeys do hoo, 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 like that but lord hanuman did that harder and harder Start stomping his feet, and that's why this 10,000, what what is 811 meters now, was 10,000 times the height, and that started becoming lower and lower because of his weight, and all around this, wherever he stamped, uh, it became grassland. Funny little story that I read somewhere. Not sure if it's true or not, but nonetheless, it's very fascinating. All right, off we go. एक मिनट एक मिनट अच्छा चलिए आइए सो दिस ब्यूटीफुल मार्शी लैंड दैट इज क्रिएटेड बाय चरण गंगा ऑन द राइट सो सी दिस वाटर it's actually coming all the way from the vishnu statue that we saw this is coming all the way from vishnu statue known as charan ganga makes the lifeline of bandargarh national park and it's very awesome to see uh, especially in the mornings sambar deer or langur just sitting by the side sambar deer just foraging in the water and even cheetal Ah, oh, stork. You see lesser adjutant stork flying over there. So, in the meantime, I'm just going to quickly find the adjutant stork for you guys on the book so you guys can see a reference. In the meantime, watch them soar away in glory. So here we have the storks and number 5 which is this one is a lesser adjutant stork. So as you can see um unfortunately I wasn't able to give you guys a clear view because the stork was flying but uh the lesser adjutant stork is 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 has this white neck rough pale gray panel on the blackish upper wing and it has the gray undertail covers. 
Uh, in flight, its best distinguished feature is the upper wing pattern, which is right here. That's how I distinguished it, uh, especially when it opens its flight. As you can see, this upper wing, it looks like fingers, but uh, vultures also have that, but this is significantly longer. And of course, you can make it out by the, the yellowish pattern on the throat and the beak. What is very cool is they have bluish eyes. Uh, we're going to throw in a photograph for you guys to see as well. And they are, <laughs> a lot of people think they're absolutely ugly. I think they're beautiful because of the bluish eyes. God didn't give them the best head. Uh, they're kind of bald. And they often resemble old army men walking with their head, with their hands in the back and slowly tumbling through. But they're quite prehistoric looking birds. Their beak is absolutely massive. All right, we're gonna keep going and continue and see what else we can find. Alright, the grass stand we are in right now after Chakradhara while uh, going towards the gate. This is called Siddh Baba Menus or Siddh Baba Grasslands because there's a small temple right on the right here named after a old priest that used to be here and it's believed that anything that you ask from heart uh, and if you seek its blessings it'll come true so we're gonna stop there for a quick while and say a little prayer oh Indian roller Indian roller beautiful beautiful Indian roller it's also known as Neil Kunt and I hope it moves this way because I want to show the patterns on its on its front so it's of course the turquoise blue cap that you should look for the tawny brown back and the front uh, is kind of whitish gray. Oh, there he is. Beautiful. Come on. Oh, he's gonna come back. Look at him flying. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> he is so pretty. Hi there, buddy. What are you doing? He's in the hunting mood. That's why he's flapping his tail like that. And as you see, he flew off and then came back to the same perch. He might fly again. For a bird as pretty as that, they don't have the most beautiful voice. So if we get lucky, we're going to hear the voice as well. There are also some deer crossing in front of the road. Uh, but we're going to focus on our roller. Mm. Actually, let's focus on the road. There are more deer coming. Sorry. There, right there. I think the dashboard came through, but look at the incredible lighting on that. <laughs> and there he goes. Okay, let's move back to our roller. So much to see in so little time. Uh, he's about to fly, he's about to fly. 
Oh, beautiful. See, he caught something. He caught something, guys. Caught something. Oh, he's eating. <laughs> that is a kill. We just witnessed a kill. <laughs> Often people just think that kills are happening from uh, or, or by the big predators like the tiger or the leopard. But that itself was a kill as well, right? It's feeding itself. And it was a small kill, whatever he saw. He's going to try finding something else as well. You can see it's, it's looking left and right. And I told you he's going to be in a hunting mode. Again, observation is key in wildlife. I'm actually going to take my binoculars and get a closer look at them. Or look at him rather, not them. It's a singular. Beautiful, look at the lighting on him. Okay, as I said, we have to stop at Siddh Baba. We're going to let our roller be and enjoy his hunting. Hope he catches something bigger and better as well. Uh, here's Siddh Baba. Um, you tell me the angle. Is this okay? Yeah. Oh. So we're going to stop here for a quick second. Uh, say our prayers from our heart and seek Siddh Baba's blessings. Okay, hope you said your prayers. Whenever I have uh, people coming, then I always tell them you have to say one thing every day whenever you pass this place. That is say Jai Siddh Baba. <laughs> so one, next time you guys are in Bandhukar, don't forget. I'm gonna let this vehicle pass. And as the vehicle goes and takes a turn, there will be one of my favorite locations in Bandhukar. We got some deer on the left. Beautiful mother with his with its fawn. A doe and its fawn. There they run away. They're running away. You can barely see them. Oh, beautiful lighting. Nice greenery. Gorgeous. Yeah, and these guys are a little shy. Alright, we're gonna head off and continue our journey. Again, this is Charanganga that's flowing. Oh, you can see the soft shell turtle, guys. That's very rare here in Bandhukar. Right the soft shell turtle. Soaking in the sun. And you also see some beautiful 
red dragonflies flying around. <laughs> this turtle is living the life. Absolutely amazing. I hope you guys got a good look at it. During that, we are also playing some cool facts about the turtles for you. So this is one of my favorite locations in Bandhavgarh, called Jamania. Look at the forest, beautiful. I'm actually going to remove my hat so you guys can see better. Uh, Himan should just focus on the road. So in the morning, this is where we were when we were hearing the alarm call. So Chakradhara female was probably here and she took her cubs towards the right and after taking them towards the right not through the rocks but in between the rocks there's a kind of a valley she must have gone like this and ended up at Gopalpur uh, Talab near Gopalpur Talab and crossed the bridge that's where we found her but in the morning she was right here that's why we we're hearing such strong samba alarm calls See the water and the reason this and the reason this place is called Jamunia is because of all the Jaman trees. Okay, so right here is Arjun tree and you see the bark Arjuni Arjuna terminalia is the scientific name. And what's interesting is the bark is actually used to make, to make a medicine which is used for heart patients. So nature has so many uses and so many important facts that you can, that you can learn while on a safari like this. And right behind them, the small ones that you see are jamun trees. Okay, but we're going to head out. Right back. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed your first ever virtual safari experience. India's first virtual safari experience. Once again, uh, we are in Bandhavgarh National Park in Central India. My name is Suyash Keshri. I'm a wildlife filmmaker and presenter and on this safari experience, I'm your host and guide. Behind the first camera, we have Himanshu Yadav. On second camera, we have Nithil Krishna and our guide is Lala. Thank you so much for joining and we will see you on the next safari. Until then, bye-bye, good morning, good day, good evening, depends on where you are and I will see you on the next one. Take care.